Welcome to the Once Upon an Island podcast. I'm your host, Wesley, and of course, I'm joined by my co-host, Rebecca. And today we're talking about Survivor 46, episode four, um, in probably, is it, is this the most predictable episode of the whole season, Rebecca? <laughs> it was very predictable. This was honestly, okay, I know we've talked about the episode lengths before. For the most part, I feel like 90 minutes is perfect, but this episode kind of felt like it was dragging and there were two challenges so like I don't think it's really the episode length I think it's just yeah it just feels very predictable and like I don't know it's not as engaging as past seasons have been for sure this episode and even the last episode it's the cast it's the cast Mm -hmm. it's this is we've we know that this format works we saw it in 45 the 90 minutes and that was a really Mm -hmm. good season and I know it's not amazing we start the podcast for those who are like Oh man, like this doesn't get me excited. Yeah, welcome to our world. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I feel like, I mean, spoiler alert, I guess, but like Banu was one of the most interesting people. And so I'm like kind of already dreading next week's episode without him. Bruh, if Yanu has to go back to tribal again, just like, can we merge <laughs> yeah. already? Can yeah. we just merge? You know, like we got to do something to, yeah, spice this up. The, the collapse of Yanu is not as interesting as the collapse of Lulu. Lulu was so chaotic. Yeah. And, you know, it, it's funny because like those two tribes are so comparable in so many ways. And yeah, I, I don't know what it was about Lulu. I think Casting. it was. Yeah, it was that everyone was an individual <laughs> mess on top of the tribe being a mess as a whole. Where So like this season, if we had a tribe full of Banus, like that would be way more interesting than this. Oh, I can guarantee you people are already disagreeing with that statement. Uh, oh, I saw really? a lot of dis- <laughs> I saw a lot of people saying last week like if I any any, I, any scene with Bonu I'm skipping. So this week they skipped about seventy five percent of the episode. Yeah, yeah, I was gonna say. <laughs> <laughs> but bonnie has gone for those who are not big Bonu fans. I, I was yep. paying close attention. We got I got I don't know if we I got a lot of flack last week. Flack mm-hmm. being a strong word, I guess that mm-hmm. uh, for not being understanding why people are rooting for Venus and why people think she's gonna win. And this week yep. I paid attention. And it didn't clear up anything. Nothing was cleared up at all. In fact, I think she was skunked. I think she got no confessionals. So I did a poll, Rebecca. Oh, go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> I did a poll, Rebecca. Uh, yeah. And I asked people, okay, is Venus A? And I gave them a few options. It was hero mm-hmm. who will win, hero who will lose, a villain who will win, and a villain who will lose. Now, between villain and hero, which one do you think won? I feel like most people see her as a villain. 63% said she's a villain. Now, between yeah. winning and losing, which one do you mm-hmm. think got more popular? Mm, I feel like winning, but yeah, what, what did people say? 78% said she'll lose. So we have a villain who's going to lose by an overwhelming majority. So uh-huh. I, I, I don't get it. I don't get it. I don't. <laughs> I, what am I looking for? Here? If other... It's just it's got to be a vocal minority because the silent majority votes that she's a villain who's going to lose. That's what mm-hmm. I see. I see a villain who's going to lose. I don't, I don't get it. So I was hoping something yeah. would be cleared up this week. Nothing was cleared up at all. We spent excessive <laughs> time on Yanu where we already know what's going to happen. So I actually would have rather spent more time with a tribe that's going to matter down the line, I guess, because I don't think it's the Yanu tribe, but I could be wrong. Maybe they are. Maybe they are the most important and we're just overlooking because of how much of a mess they've been but not as fun of a mess as lulu that's for sure yeah no we'll try not to complain too much this podcast though this was not a great (laughs) start to the podcast for yourself (laughs) okay well i will try not to (laughs) but yeah we got chapter marks for those of us for those who are here on youtube uh as always these podcasts go up ad free uh the day before on uh, the day we record them on patreon they go up the day after on youtube the day you're listening on youtube they go up the day before anyways it's the whole thing and if you're listening on spotify or anywhere else like that podcast platforms uh you're listening to these days later check them out on youtube check them out on patreon it's free to sign up for literally does not cost you a dime to listen to them on patreon ad free okay so let's just walk through this whole thing chronologically uh and we have some fun stuff as usual in those chapters like uh question of the week maybe this time one of us will get it right yeah. So uh, we saw next time on Survivor last week. We saw next time on Survivor showing 
Bonnie's like, guys, I have a confession. And I was, I even said it last week's podcast. I was like, yeah. the lighting is the exact same as when Jeff left. I think it's literally after you left. Well, what do you know? Mm-hmm. Two seconds after he leaves here, Bonnie's like, I have a confession. And he tells them and he tries to minimize it. But even in his minimizing of what he did, because they didn't mm-hmm. see all the theatrics that went along with his, <laughs> how he told Liz and Ben, who by the yeah. way is stacked with cash, Liz, uh, Bonnie snitches on himself and he does it under the guise if he needs to be honest. Well, here's the thing, Bonnie, no one asked. Yeah. <laughs> no one asked. <laughs> There's nothing to be honest about. No one asked. No one asked, hey, by the way, did you snitch on us to the air truck? No one asked. So this is is honesty the right word or is is stupidity the right word? Ah, and that's a harsh word to use, but this is like I don't understand. He says he's a super fan, he's watched every season, but like did he though? Did he? Because I feel like this kind of stuff's been covered multiple times over the course of the history of Survivor. This is not new. They were not in new. This is not a new situation. This is old hat. Everything here is old hat. This is all basic. This is 101 at this point. Yeah. I don't understand. Rebecca, help me understand. I don't understand. Yeah. I I don't know that I fully understand either. Part of me thinks that it was just like his conscience was just like, oh, I, I have to tell them or whatever. Because like, yeah, when he first came back, like he did lie to them. Like he said he still had a vote. Like he... I mean, you know, omitted the the fact that he told them, you know, everything about what's going on in their tribe. So like, yeah, like you said, it was really unprompted. And it was like, I think he was, I don't know. And I, I hate like saying that he was emotional as if it was a bad thing. Because like, I don't know, sometimes emotions can be bad. Sometimes they can be good, especially in the context of this game. But I think he was just like so emotional because, you know, he clearly was a very emotional player and he was like so relieved to not have to go to tribal because he figured he was going to get voted out. And so in that moment where he was so relieved, he's like, OK, l- like I have to I have to do something. I have to tell something, you know, I have to like be honest with them or whatever. And like, I don't know, I get it in the sense of like he wants to be like, oh, I need to build, you know, I, I need to build trust or rapport with my tribe. But like, I, I just don't know how he didn't realize that that was going to like do the opposite and lose him a bunch of trust. So, yeah, it was definitely a huge misstep. And I think he knew that um, pretty quickly afterwards. But yeah, is it did he, though, because it felt like he still didn't quite get it by the end. I don't think That's he understood part, why. Yeah. I don't know if he understood why, but like, I think he understood that, like, because he, he said, you know, a, a brief like five minute conversation blew up my whole game he said five seconds did he, did he say five, five second. minutes uh, he, he five might seconds. have said five second yeah yeah and i'm like that's Either misunderstanding way, what happened but Bonnie. yeah so it's like he's he didn't understand why they were upset with him but like i think he understood that that conversation is what did him in that was the so. straw that broke the camel's back but for days mm-hmm. they have been telling him hey at tribal like you were like you were saying yeah. you're, like <laughs> yeah. you were screwing us all every time you talk <laughs> like every time And he's just like went in one ear and out the other. So, man, uh, for those who really didn't like Bonu, I guess you got what you wanted. Um, For the rest of us who just wanted a good season, uh, it's starting quite slow, Mm -hmm. (laughs) frankly. But to be fair, if we're going to give 46 any slack, which why not? Who knows? It could end strong. Vanuatu, one of my favorite seasons, season nine, the first four episodes, I mean, even part of episode five is so slow. And then a literal earthquake happens, which I don't think is going to happen this season, but a literal earthquake happens. And then from there yep. on out, the season just takes off. It gets better. By the end, it's a masterpiece. So 46, I'm not promising a masterpiece, but I am saying <laughs> is that there is precedent for a very slow start to a season only for it to become a season. That everyone's like, you have to watch this one yeah. now because there's people, Rebecca, I see. I don't I don't know about you. There's people I see mm-hmm. who are like, I couldn't get through the first few episodes. I'm like, I know you have to stick it out. Once yeah. you pass the first few episodes, <laughs> it gets so good. So anyways, all right. Uh, yeah. Jeff leaves and Bonu admits, and it's it definitely, as you said, it's his conscience is, uh, he's feeling guilty for lying to them, which is like, I get that. And I, I do appreciate people who want to play survivor as themselves, but like, also I think there's some element of like, you have to understand the game that you're signing up for. And like, you know, I think we've talked about this before, but people understand that this is a game and for the most part, people don't take it too personally. And I mean, there's always exceptions, of course, but like, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I think you have to like understand what you're signing up to do and yeah, decide that before you get on the island, you know? 
he acts as if him d- doing what he did the journey is the whole reason by itself is mm-hmm. how it appears. But the reality is, is that no one on the journey ex- asked you or expected you to give all the information away. That was, right. as you said earlier, Rebecca, emotional. His emotions took yeah. over his logic. Um, very clearly, he struggles to maintain a balance. So he volunteered all the information of his own free will. No one asked him. No one asked him for that information. No, he said, hey, by the way, is, you know, <laughs> well, how do you feel about Kenzie? What about, you know, and even if they did, you, you could just be like, I like them. Or you don't have yeah. to give all these details. But he broke down emotionally. And here's the thing. We're all sitting here and even me right now are like, Bonnie's so bad. But here's the thing. The Yanu tribe screwed up when they made Bonnie not feel good. Knowing this mm-hmm. dude's emotional and let it, and yep. like, you on the journey and they all knew, oh crap, he's going on the journey. Yeah, but you got yourselves in this position. Like you vote, yep. you voted off other people for this guy too. You had, you had opportunities yeah. and you let him go. So <clears throat> everyone on yeah. Yanu has screwed up. And I, at the moment we'll see in our winner rankings, but, uh, who on Yanu has improved? Do you have a cat on your lap by chance, Rebecca? I do. Yes. Are you hearing her? I heard the purr. I don't know if <laughs> people over the podcast yeah. heard it, but I heard a purr. Yeah. <laughs> they might be able to hear it. She is, she just had dinner. So she is very happy. What's your cat's name? Willow. Willow. Oh, my favorite cat is Sir Kendrick. He's he's my favorite. I have three though. You have three cats? I don't know if I knew that. Yeah, well, maybe one day. Maybe one. I've only ever seen pictures of Sir Kendrick, but we're way off topic. So yeah. anyways. <laughs> uh <laughs> Bonnie snitched on himself. He asked you if he did something wrong. He's like, oh my gosh. Kenzie asked why Bonnie even came out of here. She's like, why didn't you just go camping mm-hmm. or something? Like, what is he <laughs> yeah. doing out here? Like just sick burns across the board. The show's just <laughs> yeah. letting him have it. And I will like, say the the roasting this season has been top tier. Oh yeah, like just dunking on Jess. Uh, yeah, just like dunking on Banu. Like, yeah, it's been really great for those of us who have been asking for people to just be real on the show and stop being so sugar coated. Ah, I didn't pronounce it right. Sugar coated and being oh Jeff, I love Survivor. It's perfect. Blah 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 blah. I mean, we're getting it this season. We're getting yeah. it. Does everybody want it? I mean, I'm down with the roasting. That's not my issue yes. with the season. My issue with the season is not the roasting. <laughs> roasting is actually one of the one of the upswings. It's like, oh, cool. Yeah. Actually, people In being fact, if we could real. get more roasting, that'd be great. Yeah, people being real is what I'm here for. So the roasting is mm-hmm. actually appreciated. Um, but yeah, every, I mean, Jazz got dunked on. Mm-hmm. Uh, Venus got dunked on. Now Bonnie's mm-hmm. getting dunked on so hard. Bonnie's Jelensky. The, yep. Jelensky. Anyone who's been <laughs> voted off minus Venus has been dunked on. I mean, Randy didn't get <laughs> yeah. voted off. So he, yeah, he, he didn't get dunked on. Yeah. So, yeah. Q, even, I mean, Bonnie's praying, right? Mm-hmm. And it's the morning time. He's praying. He's having a sweet little moment. And we, the camera man, it does such a good job here. Bonnie's in focus. Go, cuts back to Q in focus. Q's like, he can pray all he wants. He's a dead man. I was like, dang, yeah. Q. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes. Holy cow. <laughs> it was yeah, beautiful. Very savage. And I will say, like, one thing that I, I did appreciate about Q in this section of the episode was that he was very much like, okay, we're voting Banu out next. Like, that's happening. However, he was like, you know, I'm going to coach him still. Like, I'm still going to try and make him feel comfortable within our tribe. And like, just in case we end up going into a merge or whatever. And I thought that that was really smart. I don't know that it would have fully worked, you know, if they had gone yeah. into a merge. But like, I did appreciate that he seemed to have learned from their mistake in not making Banu feel like safe and part of He's the, the tribe only one that before learned. he went. Stephanie and Kenzie yes. did not. Yes. <laughs> no. I mean, Kenzie, even like, I don't know, a little bit later, you know, she did like apologize to him for like snapping at him and stuff, but she still snapped at him in the first place. So it wasn't like, that wasn't a great move on her part. But yeah, I did appreciate that Q at least seems to be an adaptable player Mm -hmm. like he he learned from his mistakes so i definitely appreciated that we'll see how that plays out for him later in in the season okay well let's talk about other tribes that are not as desolate is the word maybe Mm -hmm. we go over Mm -hmm. to nami good word nami's the other important tribe this season Mm -hmm. i think it's really by the way if that point was not hit home this episode if you didn't get the past three episodes this episode is the one that really lays out that sega is not important like there's Mm-hmm. Almost nothing actually important happening over on Sega, in my personal opinion. So we go over mm-hmm. to Nami. 
and so did Tevin sing a song. By the way, the show went out of its way to add music. Yeah. Like custom that was music. Very fun. I liked that a lot. Yeah, me too. It was a positive moment. Uh, Venus yeah. gets skunked on Nami. Last week we talked about mm-hmm. Tevin and Soda got skunked. This week it, it flipped. Venus mm-hmm. got skunked. So who knows what any of this means? Jem hides the note or she hid the note uh, for the beware advantage. And she's mm-hmm. like being all cheeky because she hid it in a tree. And Maria finds it, reads it. And they're like, okay, dig here. So everyone's digging. And Jem, every time they cut from that group digging to Jem, Jem has this like, what's it, uh, evil smile? Like a smirk. Yeah. yeah. She has like an evil smirk on her face. And I'm just like, every time she comes up, I'm laughing. <laughs> Mary's yes. not laughing, I want to point out, but I'm laughing because I'm just like, she's just screwing with them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, you just got time on their hands. This has got nothing but time. They got the most people. <laughs> They're not going, I mean, even. They just, they always get second in every challenge. Every challenge mm-hmm. gets second. Every, even the one that Yanni was going to win later, they still get second. Yep. They can't <laughs> lose. They always get second. So yep. Ben says, what if this is all just a ploy? What if this is the wrong tree? And I was like, oh, Jem's busted. Apparently mm-hmm. not the case. Par- apparently. Yeah. Apparently not the case. But yeah, that's, uh, that's all we get from uh, Siga, though. Because uh, that's, so yeah. basically a very unimportant scene, I must point out. Yeah. So we go over the reward challenge and Rebecca, what is this reward challenge? I feel like we've seen this before. That's, yeah. Yeah. Nothing too, uh, too complicated or crazy on this one, but yeah. So they started in a boat out in the ocean that they had to uh, paddle to shore and they had to stop to get a key off of a platform along the way, which by the way, Tim really struggled with platforms in this episode, platforms in the water. So yes. like when he he was responsible to get the key and I don't know what it was. I, I think the other players kept like one foot in the boat and one foot on the platform. But Tim just like went for it. Like he jumped for the platform and flipped it completely upside down, which was honestly pretty impressive. Um, but yeah, so then he he struggled with that quite a bit. Um, but yeah, so okay, so once they get the key, they have to continue paddling all the way to the beach and then lock their boat into the beach. Um, and then they use the key to unlock four rings, which are around a tall pole. And each player is responsible to get one of the rings up and over the pole. So they have to like basically throw it and just get it off of the pole. Um, so then they race up the beach and they have to dig in the sand to get under an obstacle on, on the way through the beach. And then once they get to the top, there is another very tall pole and one person has to try and throw all four rings onto the other pole. Um, so yeah, it, it was a very, I mean, nothing too crazy happened other than Yanu just like racing through this challenge and they ended up winning, which was pretty cool for them uh, to win, you know, reward. Um, and Maria struggled a lot getting the first uh, ring off of the pole. And so that was like, yeah, definitely, you know, she felt really bad because their tribe ended up losing, um, you know, the challenge because mostly because of that. Um, and yeah, it's, it's one of those things that looks so simple, but I'm sure it's like harder to do than than it seems. Um, but yeah, so that that was the uh, the challenge. And then, oh, yeah. And then when Yanu ended up winning, the reward was for fish. But because they don't have any flint yet, um, Jeff let them trade it for. Uh, one of the previous rewards so they ended up getting like a tarp and i think some like uh some some tools and like different gear and stuff so um yeah exciting that yanu finally won something before the flood of comments come in correct me yes what else is new uh sega <laughs> did lose this challenge i meant nami nami doesn't lose anything nami oh, got yes. second here uh yanu got yes. first in a surprise move though mm-hmm. yanu getting first kind of reminded me of lulu Getting first during a reward challenge last season mm-hmm. and it not meaning anything come immunity. Yeah. Yeah. And it's that's, almost like yeah. copy and pasted in that way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's it's so true. Yeah. Nami can't lose, dude. Hunter is a sharpshooter. Hunter is just like you mm-hmm. as Tevin said during the immunity challenge, he's like, Oh, once Hunter gets hand on the balls, it's over, you know. It's yeah. done. Hunter yep. Hunter is gonna kill them. And it's true. Yeah. Every time Hunter gets anything, it has to be Hunter. Even like first throw gets that ring right off. And I know other people mm-hmm. did it, but Hunter just consistently is he's too much of a threat in these challenges. Yeah. 
I also thought it was so funny because when he was throwing rings on the, the second pole towards the end of the challenge, he got one stuck on the top. And Jeff was like, it's up to you how you want to handle that. And Hunter was like, can I climb the pole? And Jeff said no. And I'm like, what? Don't tell <laughs> yeah, him he can do like, it. No. Yeah. Yeah. Let him also, do it. Also, like, Hunter, don't ask permission. Just just do it. You yes. Know? Uh-huh. Thank you, Rebecca. <laughs> but- this is true. Survivor has stated that unless they, if you, Jeff said, if you do not, if they do not say it, yeah. don't ask. Just do it. Yeah. Fair game. When Let's you go. ask, Jeff has to make a call. And mm-hmm. Jeff said, don't make him make a call. If he has to make a call, then you're probably not going to get what you want. Now, Hunter yeah. also could have shaken the pole, I assume. I don't know how. Mm-hmm. It was probably steady as a rock. You probably couldn't shake the pole. But yeah. either way, he got it. Not that it matters. They still got second. Yeah. So, yeah. I will say uh, Liz seemed to be struggling a bit on throwing the ring up. Not as bad as mm-hmm. Maria, by any means. But I think Liz was just being weighed down by her fat sacks of cash. <laughs> yep. Even Not in- quite as, as weighed down as Mariah with the jumping, but we'll get oh, to that yeah, later. No. Mariah, maybe Mariah <laughs> borrowed some of Liz's money because she was struggling oh, to jump. Oh, that must be mm-hmm. it. Her That's pockets probably. are full of gold now. Yeah, the yeah. gold bar is just holding her down. Yep. I will say Liz, <laughs> they, the last one survivor, uh, they did bring up Liz saying the gold mine quote again. I, uh, yes. Yeah, I noticed nothing, that. I figured you were going to call like call that out. Yeah. Yeah. Unfortunately, nothing's <laughs> episode was about Liz being rich, which I thought was a shame. Yeah. But, it is. We need to remind the people that she's rich and she needs a man. She wants a man. <laughs> no, no, no. But everyone no man wants can her. handle her. She can, <laughs> yeah, no man can handle her. <laughs> she wants a man, but no man can handle her. And every man wants her. Yes, it's it's a paradox. The paradox. And I will point out that after all these jokes about Liz, I went to look her up on uh, Twitter and stuff. Uh, mm-hmm. Don't come at Liz, dude. Liz will come at you. Oh, do okay. not. Liz is not one to t- Bruce took things in stride. <laughs> like Bruce tried to take things, try to be like good natured. Liz, don't come at Liz. I'm just all I'm going to say. Yeah. Don't come at That's Liz. Fair. You're going to yeah. get, you're going to get thunderstruck. You're, yeah. Cause she, honestly, you probably can't handle Liz. Yeah. So you, exactly. Nobody can handle Liz. You will get, it's like a home alone too. When the bandits go up to the door and Kevin mm-hmm. chucks down bricks, she's chucking down gold bars and you're the bandits. Okay. You're going to get struck by her gold bars. She's loaded with cash. All right. So we go back to camp and back to Nami and Liz is blown away by the stunningly gorgeous fish. Now, of course, yes. this is not her first time seeing stunningly gorgeous fish because when you're loaded with cash, that's like a daily You eat thing. fish all the time. Call I think. Constantly caviar. Yeah. Stunningly gorgeous fish <laughs> is the norm for her. Yeah. So anyways, but Tevin does get an emotional backstory. Mm hmm. And. He does. If did not, I would, there's two this episode and I almost, I normally don't really care. I only care that they happen. I don't really care as much about the emotional backstory, but I feel Mm -hmm. like the way it was presented here was, it seemed like it was natural. It made Mm -hmm. sense. It was not forced into the show. Mm -hmm. Um, and I'm just going to cut to the chase here. Maria also gets one and Mary and I both thought, and I don't know how you feel about this, Rebecca, but Maria's felt kind of forced and rushed. Rushed is really the word. Mm. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. It also... I think it was I, I think it was somewhat duplicate information because I think she had talked about it in a previous episode or at least. I, yeah, because I, because her her story was about like growing up, you know, as an immigrant from Lebanon, I believe. Mm-hmm. Um, and just saying like, you know, yeah, like I had to be perfect as a kid and like, you know, as an immigrant family, like we were never allowed to you know mess up or anything and it, all all of those talking points like sounded really familiar to me. Yeah. So I think she had talked about it before, but it's just like this time they added a photo and like sad music to like make it her emotional backstory. So, yeah, I agree. It, it wasn't like like Tevin's really hit like mm-hmm. his his was like really um, I don't know. Yeah. Like I connected with it a lot. and It was like, oh, wow. Like that really got me. But uh, yeah, Maria's wasn't as much. Yeah. Maria's felt rushed, which is weird to say mm-hmm. in a 90 minute episode when they had plenty yeah. of extra time, <laughs> by the way, with yes. all the Yanu's repeating garbage. So, yeah, Maria's felt rushed. I don't know if that means anything. That could just be, I hate to say it, sloppy editing. I don't want to say sloppy editing, mm-hmm. but it could just be sloppy. Because, see, clearly they're putting time and effort. I mean, look what they do with Tevin and Soda Song this episode. <laughs> so, right. it, it, it feels like a choice, but it could be sloppy editing. I don't know. You know, I don't mm-hmm. know. Never worked on the show. But I will say that Tevin's didn't feel sloppy and rushed and Maria's did. Take that for mm-hmm. what you will. I don't know if that affects anything. 
So anyways, uh, God forbid we spend too much time away from the purple camp. So we go back <laughs> and Tiffany says, we may not lose again. And the moment she said this, everyone and their mother and my dog, <laughs> my dog even knew that obviously yeah. that's not that they're doing the obvious. Yep. And we covered Banu. He's being a mess. Yep. Yep. All right. So classic Banu. <laughs> he was coaching Banu. <laughs> he asked, Ken, um, he's coaching Banu, trying to help him give, basically give generic answers instead of giving such specifics. The specifics are what's killing them. Banu doesn't mm-hmm. know how to give a vague answer. I mm-hmm. feel like it's part of the problem. Banu only knows specifically every bit of information he knows. And that's the only way he answers questions, which mm-hmm. is great. Not on Survivor. Right. Not on Survivor. It's that's wonderful. But on Survivor, being vague is part of the game. Yes. You can be honest and be vague, you know? And yeah, uh, exactly. Kind of the point here. He's yeah. coaching him up. As you said, Q is doing a good job of working because what if something happens? What if there's mm-hmm. another me- medical evac? What if there is a tribe swap? They don't know. There could be yeah. one in between the reward and the immunity. They have no idea. Uh, yeah. Q, so Q, as you said, is being adaptable. He's working with Banu just in case you do not know. What if there's another journey of Banu goes? You don't know. Whereas mm-hmm. Tiffany and, and Kenzie are doing absolutely nothing to make him feel better. No lessons mm-hmm. have been learned by anybody but Q, it feels like. Yeah. And I, I don't think the story's really being told from a Q's winning perspective. Could be wrong. Yeah. But it yeah. is good on Q would, that he did this. You know, I was wondering about that, too, because I feel like we're hearing from Q a lot, which, like, granted, we're hearing from Yanu a lot because they keep going to tribal. But, yeah, I I agree that I, I don't know if it feels like a winner, like, storyline for him, but it is interesting that, yeah, we seem to be getting a lot of confessionals from him and um, hearing a lot of, like, strategy and, and stuff of, like, you know, what he was trying to do like with coaching Banu and all of that so yeah I don't know well I, I'll be very curious to see how he operates in a post merge game if he can make it there if Yanu makes yeah. it at all Um. well what Q does have going for yeah. him is that he shouldn't appear to be too much of a challenge threat I know they mm-hmm. did win the reward challenge today but the Yanu tribe in general looks so pathetic in every yeah. challenge <laughs> and was Q not the one throwing the balls for their win in the immunity challenge he was, he, wasn't was he? he was, although I will say, I think he did a pretty good job. It was mostly like Banu took forever to retrieve the one that he missed. And so yeah. I think that was like really what lost them time. But yeah, he was. And the Hunter's a sharpshooter because they were tied with yes. Nami going into because uh, Tim mm-hmm. and T had a, had, a, had a time advantage and mm-hmm. they tied with Nami in the immunity challenge going into yep. the throwing the balls and Hunter's a sharpshooter and Q's just like any other person who's not hunter Mm -hmm. like pretty good but not getting them all one shot so yeah anyways we haven't got to that part yet i'm just pointing out that i wonder i wonder how what q's threat level will be going into the merge you Mm -hmm. know i don't yeah i don't think it'll be too high but people do love to come up with any reason they can all right so ben gives sega a pep talk Mm -hmm. and i'm just like we got nothing for sega don't we (laughs) right (laughs) There's just nothing happening here. We spend another scene on them digging. Yep. Another scene. <laughs> well, to be nothing. fair, in the first scene, there were ants. Oh. And then in the second scene, they they came back later to keep digging. So and last episode, so little happened that we actually just cut to four days prior because nothing was going on. Nothing right. is happening on Sega that's important. Nothing at all. This has to be mm-hmm. the least... Somehow they're the least important tribe despite having the most people, which means mm-hmm. we have a tribe collapse incoming. Come the merge. These people will not be united. They're going to fall apart. They're going to turn each other or they're going to be bad. Who knows? What I do know is that the winner's not coming from Sika. Watch me be wrong. I'm ready my words. I'm, <laughs> I'm not, I will not, I'm not going to sit here and say hundred percent, but my goodness is the content of the pre-merge show that Sika is not important. Mm-hmm. It just does nothing represents it. We're literally just, goofing off because they feel like they have to show Sega because technically I think they're supposed to. <laughs> you know? uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. So yeah, the coughing is purposeful by the way. Oh, okay. For, for, for dramatic <laughs> effect. I don't know if anybody caught on to that yet. <laughs> to emphasize. Yeah. A point. Yep. Yep. More, good. <laughs> I constantly, as I told Mary, I work on jokes until I think they're funny and I stop them immediately. 
Oh, nice. Yeah. So once I think yeah. it's funny, then I'll stop doing it. <laughs> Sammy's still 19, by the way. I haven't laughed once at that joke. Is he? Oh, my yep. goodness. <laughs> As wow. he turns 22 <laughs> soon, he's still 19. All right. Oh, man. So Bonnie's like, Kenzie, can you help him? And she's like, yeah, can I just enjoy the win right now? And he's like, fine, I'll <laughs> walk away. It's like, oh, my yeah. gosh. All right. <laughs> It yeah, both of like them a- were so like intense in that conversation. I was like, guys, relax. <laughs> like, both of you need to relax. They've had no fire for nine yes, days or that, how many days it's been. That's that's fair. I forget. I'm sitting here on my couch, like fully, like eating a snack and being like, why aren't you guys more relaxed? It's like Bonnie's going going through all the stages of grief, man. In this episode, yeah, I did feel bad for him in this episode. Mm, that's what they wanted you to feel he definitely yeah. got i know by the end he's supposed to be sympathetic but in my mind he was mm-hmm. removed the sim part of the word and that's how oh, i felt about yes. how he was acting wow that took a, me a really long time to get there okay that's okay i'm following I'm, you i'm glad that you <laughs> caught up Bonnie's 40 years old and he mm-hmm. is i don't know i don't know how to say this like just like just like what is he doing here why did they cast him I mean, I guess he is making entertainment, but like, I don't know. Like, I feel bad for him and I don't want to feel bad for anybody playing Survivor. I want people to get their comeuppance. I want people to try and fail. I want people to try and succeed. I, I, it's not on my bingo card to see somebody beg and plead like like they're about to be murdered on death row. Be, oh, I'm like, it's like episode four of Survivor and you've I've supposedly watched every season as a super fan. Things are just aren't lining up. I'm miss. I am not understanding something. I I am not understanding something. Bonu. So I'm sure somebody understands Bonu. It's not me. I don't get it. I because it's if now if he said that he just started watching the show recently and he's not a super fan, I'd be like, yeah, totally. This makes sense. <laughs> but it doesn't make sense yeah. when you say you're super fan. You've seen it every season. This is I don't know. yeah because it, it he does almost come across as like I I don't and I don't mean this like recruited? in a derogatory way, but like. He he almost comes across as like a casual fan where like he's seen some episodes and he's like, wow, I love the adventure of this show. And so let me sign up and like go do that. But yeah, he does not strike me as like someone who's watched 45 or 44, however many were yeah. available before they went out there. 44, you know, yeah. 44 seasons of a show. At, like, yeah, because if you've seen every episode, like even if you're not like obsessively remembering like all the statistics and like oh when this happened and blah 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 it's like even if you've just watched all the episodes like you have to know some of the strategy coming out onto the island and yeah he doesn't he didn't seem to get that. i mean he even said that towards the end of like you know the first six days he was like this wasn't clicking and now it's clicked but like it's too late and uh, so yeah i don't know that it doesn't totally line up for me either Bonnie is somebody who would have been perfect to be cast on Amazing Race. And that's mm. not a, that's not a diss, by the way. I feel mm-hmm. like I don't want to say that like, oh, like I don't think I think Amazing Race is a different show, not a lesser show. To be clear. Mm-hmm. It's a different show in terms of, like you race around the world. You work with somebody and positivity actually helps you more that like there's mm. no like like cutthroat is not as much on the Amazing Race. It's more about if you're positive, like that can push you through a lot of tough times. But mm-hmm. I don't know. Bonnie's so emotional. Maybe he would have fallen apart there, too. But I feel like can you imagine race- him. Oh, sorry. No, can you imagine him on the traders? No, no. Oh, he would. Yeah, I would keep like, him around as a faithful just because of the chaos. Yeah, he would yep. be a hot mess on that show. Another I show. Would, I would love that. Like, honestly, he would be so entertaining on that show. I feel like so many people complain about seeing Bonnie on the screen, though. I feel like that is not going to help yeah. the viewership. Yeah. He's very split. All right. So. <sighs> so hard for me to talk about the Yanni tribe this episode it's just like i it's not fun it wasn't fun to watch so yeah. uh sega is still looking for the beware advantage we talked about that mariah mm-hmm. th- throws out the name tim and me tim mm-hmm. planted it well yeah. jem sees an opening and takes advantage good for jem smart smart of jem yeah. to take advantage of this opening yes yep. i think tim did plant it very <laughs> smart of you mariah yep now, yeah. I will import. I want. There's something more important about Mariah mm-hmm. that we haven't talked about yet. This what past week, she posted a picture of her jumping off the platform. I guess mm-hmm. a spoiler alert. I didn't realize that was going to be a part important part of the episode. She's jumping off the platform and saying, 
We're soaring. We're flying. There's not a star in heaven we can't reach. Amazing reference. And I thought, wow. That's incredible. Perfect. perfect. What do we just we talk We were about just talking week? about High School Musical last week, right? Yes. Amazing. That's where her favorite movie was. She said two. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Long movie. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. The, it's fair. They're, they all have different charm to them and different, different, I don't know. I feel like some of the songs in the second one are so iconic. Like the boys are back and bet on it. And uh, I don't know. Yeah. But fair enough. No, I think two's pretty good. I think three is the best, in my personal opinion. But anyways, I don't get too far yeah. into that <laughs> rabbit hole again. Just throwing it out there. Yep. So, uh, yeah, Tim planted it. And now what do you think about mm-hmm. how is how do you feel about Jem's whole strategy here? Is this a waste of her time? Is she exposing herself possibly too much to getting caught? Mm hmm. Yeah. I mean, here's the thing. Like like you said, nothing is happening on Sega. <laughs> And I did like her her quote where she was like, she said something along the lines of, you know, out here on Survivor, your job is to win, but also it's okay to have fun along the way. And I feel like that's valid. I mean, they've been out here for what, eight, nine days now. And like, yeah, you got to do something to keep yourself entertained. So, I mean, I, I think it's a good move in the sense that like, I think she played it well because she's starting to get, uh, I mean, Mariah, you know, is throwing suspicion on Tim and then they discuss it with Maria. And so she's kind of, I mean, it's still untested, of course, because they haven't been to tribal, but she she did start to kind of get the, the girls to like, I don't know, solidify their alliance a little bit more. So I think it's a good move, but obviously it's a little hard to tell because... None of this has been tested yet because they haven't been to tribal. Mm -hmm. Um, But yeah, I mean, I respected her, you know, trying to like make a move with very little to work off of, you know, and it wasn't like it wasn't like a huge swing. Like she didn't do anything crazy because sometimes people do too much at the stage in the game. And um, yeah, I thought it was like subtle enough that I, I think it'll be a good move. But yeah, we'll see what happens. I think there was a chance she could have been busted here because mm-hmm. they, they're still, they still have all six members mm-hmm. and I don't know. So th- there's one, two ways to look at this. Cause I want to talk about anybody, but Yanni right now. I'm so frustrated mm-hmm. by Yanni. Uh, yeah. There's two ways to look at this. One is that it's an unnecessary risk, which I, I totally understand. Sure. There's yep. also the thought of with the unnecessary risk, what are the up, what's the upside? Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Uh, in this case, it can make others think that this is the upside. It can make other thing, others think the beware advantage is still out there. But at, mm-hmm. as we've quickly seen, it actually makes everybody feel like somebody has it. But upside, mm-hmm. and this is, it was a risk, and here's the risk, is that, well, now somebody thinks Tim has it. Well, mm-hmm. that makes Tim a target, not you. Mm-hmm. But what if somebody thought Maria had it, like actually had it? Or what if Charlie actually had it? Like somebody who's in your alliance or Charlie's Angels alliance. Wouldn't that be mm-hmm. bad? You could have hurt your own alliance. You're lucky it ended up being Tim who got bust, who was getting this pinned mm-hmm. on, I feel like. Well, yeah. And I mean, again, not to get too far ahead of ourselves, but in the, the clip from next week's episode, it looked like Tim was suspicious of Jim. And so, yeah, it's, I mean, I think it's, it's definitely drawing a line in the sand which like is a little bit unnecessary, I guess, at this stage of the game, but also like it is helpful to know like who your actual alliance is and stuff. Um, so drawing those lines in the sand is a good thing. I mean, again, nothing is like set until you actually go to tribal, but um, yeah, I, so I don't know if this is indicating that next week Sega is going to go to tribal or if it's just going to be a bunch of drama for no reason. And I think that will uh kind of help determine yeah if this was a good move or not depending on how that plays out well like brandon my question is who, who's mm-hmm. tim ben yeah, exactly. has gotten air time ben's gotten time on the air who's mm-hmm. tim tim's nobody this yeah. season couldn't tell you yeah no he's been presented as nobody he's presented as cannon fodder basically mm-hmm. or whoever is going to win uh we also get nami so we have the sega oh tim might be on the bottom we go over to Nami, mm-hmm. they're having a laundry day. And yes. Soda says Liz and Venus are on the outs. Mm-hmm. But it's ironic because Tevin says, hmm, maybe Soda's playing too hard. This is what you get when nobody's going tribal, by the way. You just mm-hmm. get, there's like everybody's suspicious. They don't even know what to do. 
Yeah. Tony decides he wants to plant seeds and basically get, he says, soda got to go to. And yes, again, if I recall, it has been three weeks in a row, Rebecca. I haven't mm-hmm. checked this week's secret scenes because they haven't been posted yet as of the time of us recording. Three weeks in a row, Rebecca, there have been negative Tevin scenes cut from the show, put in secret yeah. scenes. All, every episode up to this one. Mm-hmm. They leave this stuff in the episode, including his emotional backstory. It's all positive. He is mm-hmm. either a fan favorite who's going to lose or uh, like lose before getting final travel or he's going to win. There's just no way. Mm-hmm. Like everything about Tevin has been presented. They literally are cutting out all the negativity about yeah. Tevin. Anything that's negative. A scene that was actually pro Venus negative Tevin was cut last week and put in the secret scenes. Oh, interesting. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. It's I don't know if it's too obvious I don't know. But what yeah, I'm saying I think is that that's my thing with Tevin is like, I feel like it's it's so obvious that I'm it, it almost comes full circle. And I'm like, well, it's too obvious. It can't be him. Um, <laughs> even like, I mean, going all the way back to his opening narration in the first episode, it was just like, wow, this is the Tevin show. Like, yeah, the show really seems to like him. Um, so that makes me think it's not him. But maybe that's just me trying to play 4d chess with the editors and then we'll get to the end and it'll be like oh well okay it was just obvious the whole time you know and i haven't listened to this season's on fire podcast to be fair i wait till the end of Mm -hmm. the season and when it's over to listen because jeff Mm -hmm. there's a lot of white noise in there that has absolutely it's all just you hyped up to keep watching a show or it's Mm -hmm. make you think that something's gonna happen like last season he's like oh i know we cut out the whole twist where that, uh, I forgot what her name was, Kendra voted for somebody on Lulu. Ooh, but it's probably super important. It wasn't. Mm, it was not yeah. important. So like stuff like that, when you listen at the end of the season, you're like, okay, I know what Jet. this is just white noise. So yeah. I say this because I haven't listened to the season yet, so I don't know what their explanations are for their things because I don't know what's true, what's not, and I don't need to listen to more lies. So yeah. I what I am saying, though, is that during the 44 podcast, cutting through all the white noise, one of the things they said in there was they opened the season with Carolyn that season because mm. they thought it would come full circle at the end when she gives a confessional at the end. And as we saw in the finale, it did she had a confessional mm-hmm. at the end where it's like she was very confident in her confessional and they brought it up. They brought up how the, uh, she couldn't even barely get through one in the first episode. And mm-hmm. so Tevin having won the opening here, but they threw out the idea of of, think, of making people think she could be the winner because of that. Now, mm. I wonder if they're they're like, OK, let's just do it this time. Let's give him the opening. And he is mm-hmm. the winner. If coming full circle for him would be ending the season on a win. Mm-hmm. He started the season. He ends it. With Carolyn, they did the same thing. She started. She ended. With the opening narration, she came full circle. Even though she lost, she got to final tribal. So I wonder if they're just committing to it this time. Because that's something they talked about during the 44 podcast. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. That'd be very cool. Yeah. I don't know, though. It's... Yeah. I think that there's, again, I, I don't want to like dunk on the editors for this season by any means because, you know, I don't think that's fair. But yeah, it, it does make me wonder, like, is the editing actually going to be that obvious this season, you know? And like, I, I don't know how I feel about that because like as I think as a casual viewer, like that'd be cool. But then like as more of a of like, I don't know, super fan to use that term, I guess it is mm-hmm. like it's almost like a little disappointing to like know who the winner is in episode one. Like that's part of the, you know, the draw of the show. So yeah, I mean, yeah, it'll be interesting to see how that happens. Cause like, like I said, I almost feel like at this point it's just so obvious that I'm like, I kind of don't want it to be him cause mm-hmm. it's too obvious, but also at the same time, like, I don't know. I, I like Tevin as a person. I think he'd be a great winner, but yeah, we'll see what happens. And I'm not saying that it is Tevin for a fact. I'm just saying there's just so much yeah, overwhelming course. evidence for Tevin. And we literally seen them cut things out that make Tevin look bad in mm-hmm. secret scenes that this, these are all the one-on-one telltale signs. Now, here's the thing, as we talked about in the first podcast, because mm-hmm. I don't want to talk about anybody but Yanni right now, in case you haven't noticed. Yeah, totally fair. Just in case anybody's wondering, listener Fat Sacks of Cash <laughs> has paid me to talk about the other tribes, especially <laughs> her tribe. So that's why we're here. Sponsor Amazing. the podcast. Thank you, Liz. Uh, <laughs> With Nami, with it seems like they're important because we get content from them. It's not four days ago. We're checking in with them. You know, mm-hmm. we're seeing what they're up to. What are they thinking? What are they? And it's like Sega. It's like whatever. Like it's just because they have to talk about the beer. beer, beer. It's like we required to talk about the beer. Advantage. They have nothing else to talk about. Mm-hmm. They have nothing else going on. Sega. 
we cut to days yeah. before talk about the beware advantage that we were supposed to talk about before nothing's happening on c gets important now he has important content and with seven i don't know just everything is just everything about seven's important but he does mm-hmm. say so explain too hard he plants these seeds to get her out so to got to go to and hunter's like yeah i want so mm-hmm. too and i think hunter's been thinking about this ever since they sang the camp songs and he's like i've been trying to escape this and <laughs> yes. it followed me so hunter's probably been planning this so to got to go to himself <laughs> but really, Hunter is shown to be Tevin's sidekick. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I thought it was interesting the way that that was sort of framed because in, in Hunter's confessional, he was like, I also want Soda gone because she's my competition for like Tevin's number one. So it was like, yeah, Hunter wants Soda gone. But more than that, it seems like he wants to be Tevin's number two. Yeah. The Andy Griffith Alliance. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Also, episode one, they throw out a ton of red herrings. I got to point out. Mm-hmm. Maybe all those red herrings were distracted from the fact that Tevin had the opening narration. He's the winner. Mm, yeah. Mm, yeah. 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 Could be. I, don't know, I had a comment this week. It's like, uh, what seasons have you not rewatched? Don't say anything in the new era, please. And I'm like, well, it's impossible to say because I've watched all these seasons like five to ten times each. So <laughs> right? the only season yeah. I haven't rewatched is 46. And mm-hmm. that's not to be like snarky. It's just kind of like. So like I have, I feel like I, it's like ingrained in my brain, like stuff to like my brain with, it's like, I didn't notice it, but my brain did, you know? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know if you had to estimate how many <laughs> hours have you spent watching oh Survivor? I mean, I like I've that. been doing this channel for it's four and a half lot. years and I work on the channel yeah. five days a week, unless I'm on uh, vacation, you know? Yep. So do the math. I don't know what the yeah. math on that is, but yeah. you know, about eight hour, eight hour hours days is normal. Yeah, except for the one of these podcasts, then I have to stay up at night. And that mm. not not as fun, but yeah. <laughs> I mean, I enjoy talking with you. It's just yeah, staying up to like two a.m. to get it done for the next day. That's the yeah. part I don't really care that for. That's a lot. Yeah. yeah. Anyways, so anything but Yanu. So <laughs> frankly, at this point, uh, but we got to get back to him eventually. So anyway, yeah. I just want to talk about the Tevin train because this is why I say winter analysis during the podcast as well. We don't just do it at the end. Yeah. No, no, no. Don't want you just skipping. Absolutely. But yeah, Hunter is shown to be Tevin's sidekick, which makes me think Soda. They set up. So they set up on Sega. They set Tim as the low man totem pole. Now mm-hmm. Soda, I guess, the low woman on the totem pole, which does reinforce the point that Venus probably goes far because she has, mm-hmm. up until this episode, been presented as a main character of sorts. Mm hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think that's fair to put Soda low although honestly i would probably put liz at the bottom of nami because like i don't, I feel like we we don't know a ton of about liz personally other than the fact that she has tons of money yeah every man wants her no man yes, can handle no her. man can handle her all of that <laughs> um but i feel and she like she sponsors this podcast so i am legally obligated yes so I, I don't want to say ranked. anything negative about no, liz at all to be clear she will thunder strike um, <laughs> us with a gold bar from the roof Oh my goodness, that sounds painful, and also it would kill I don't you. Know, like it would kill you. Well, yeah, but if I survive, then I have the gold bar. So, mm-hmm. <laughs> do you think she doesn't have more to throw at you? You think that's the only one you're getting hit with? Hey, keep them coming. Like I want to buy a house sometime. <laughs> death, so, like, death by yeah, gold. let's go. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> anyway, anyway, but no, but but I feel like in terms of like the vibe of the tribe, like Soda is definitely very likable obviously that is kind of a red flag because she's seen as a little too social but i feel like liz is also um i don't know if i want to say like looked down upon but like i think the the fact that she's brought up her businesses so much has been a big red flag for people yeah so what i'm saying is it may be a tie between like soda and liz for like who's truly on the bottom (laughs) of of the nami tribe but yeah, I guess we'll see if they uh, end up going to tribal. I agree with you. I think Liz has been shown to be the least important on the tribe. But mm-hmm. on the same hand, why are we talking about Soda so much? It seems like Soda gets brought so often. Mm-hmm. So maybe Liz is first to go if they have to. Maybe Liz is just cannon mm-hmm. fodder. Um, I can't legally say that she's low on my rankings, though. Also, yes, her enough. business, I said last week might be a scam. Um, I have completely changed my tune. Uh, yeah. My lawyer has stated that I need to say it's not a scam. Liz <laughs> okay. is a well-respected member of her email community, and oh, she is okay. loaded with Very cash, and no man can yep. handle her. All right, so just want to make sure that was that's I'm required to say that every podcast. Good All clarification. Right. Yes, yep. just in case anybody's <laughs> wondering. All right, so Mariah can't jump, but Charlie encourages her. Now, 
I almost didn't write a note about the scene because I thought it was a waste of time as everything mm-hmm. is on Sega feels like it feels like yeah but Mary pointed out that it showed that Charlie encouraged her and Jem was kind of negative towards it now I don't know if I mm. saw the Jem being negative did you see that mm. I don't know if I would have said negative I mean Jem was kind of like laughing a little bit but like let's be honest it was so funny yeah <laughs> like, even Mariah was laughing yeah like I I would have I would have laughed probably too and I mean like yeah maybe it could have been seen as a little negative because Charlie was like come on we're trying to be encouraging like you know you're doing a great job but I I didn't feel like Jim was being (laughs) rude or like discouraging in any way no no. um but yeah also like totally fair it was like a little bit negative so yeah Mary started getting a little snarky as part I think like the rest of us Mary was like eh the season's kind of mid so far so yeah. Jeff, I mean, Jeff's always says, come on in at these challenges, mm-hmm. right? No matter where the players are, the players could be in another country. He would say, come on. It doesn't matter. He just says it. Okay. <laughs> it's the thing he does. He says it. They're coming down on their speedboats. Mary's like, Psh. yeah, like they heard them on their speedboats. Like Mary's seen every season. <laughs> what is she? What's she's getting really snarky. She's getting, she's getting snarky during the episodes. She's bored. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> I'm like, Mary, out of nowhere. I'm like, they do this all the time. But now this is the episode where she's like. <laughs> Anyways, I think we were all just over yawning at this point. Yeah. All right. So the also, like, challenge. P.S. I would pay good money for Mary to do just like a audio commentary over any season, any episode of Survivor. Here's the thing about Mary. And I'll tell a quick yeah. story. Mary yes, do. does not cannot predictably be snarky or make funny jokes mary Mm, does it out of left field it has to come out of nowhere (laughs) you know so we'll one time we were driving in a car uh uh, what else would we be driving i guess we were driving in our car sure and we were on the highway (laughs) and a 18 wheeler an 18 wheeler is next to us Mm -hmm. and she was concerned it might turn into our lane while we were there Mm -hmm. (laughs) so instinctively concerning she like the roadrunner from looney tunes said meet me as she tapped her horn with her hand, but didn't actually honk the horn, just tapped it with her hand, said, meet me. But she was dead serious out of left field, out of nowhere. And I said, I said, Mary, what, what's what's That's so funny? What? And she's like, well, they might turn to our lane. I'm like, they can't hear you. Meet me, Mary. You have to honk the horn. Because <laughs> I was so, so funny. Taken, I was so blown away. I was like, I was like looking at something on my phone. I'm like, what? Mary's me leaping like she's the roadrunner. Here's the thing that first of all, that's hilarious and iconic. And second of all, I think that that's what makes like that. If she were to do like audio commentary, I think that would make it so funny because like you could literally sit through like two or three episodes with no snark, no jokes, maybe even mm-hmm. no comments. You're just like watching the episode, You're waiting, and You're then waiting. just out of nowhere for for something for her to like crack a joke or something yeah. like. I find that so funny because I think just like, yeah, catching me, catching people off guard is like so funny with stuff like that. So we anyway, were playing, that's my pitch. We were playing a board game one time with some friends and it was getting heated. And by heated, yes, I mean the rest of us often do. The rest of us were, well, I try not to get heated because I get, I let, I really like to play mind games during board games. People do not appreciate Ooh. that. People do not Ooh. appreciate that. Generally, they don't appreciate, <laughs> I play chess and I get very antagonistic about mm. about i try to bully the other person during chess which is probably not what you're supposed to do at all yes i like have you seen the queen's games. gambit <laughs> i did yeah that's not where i got it from i just okay. am antagonistic <laughs> during games naturally which is why okay. i know in survivor i'd be a final three goat or i'm gone first i already mm. know i know i'm aware yeah. but during yeah. a board game uh i was trying to contain my antagonism i guess and mm-hmm. mary out of nowhere just like yells fudge sickles and i'm like <laughs> First off, what adult says fudge sickles? But she did it. She said it with such passion that we all started laughing. We were all laughing. And I'm just that's what I mean. Just out of left field, Mary just says things. So, yeah. anyways, Mary like, Mary's good for a line, but it's like it's not. You cannot prompt. You cannot expect. It has to come naturally when you're least yeah. expecting it. Fair enough. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So uh, immunity <laughs> challenge. Yes. Yes. Okay. So for this immunity challenge, um, everyone started on a platform out in the water. This was a water challenge. So uh, you have to jump into the water 
and swim over to an obstacle, which is like a rope ladder that you have to climb up and then jump off of the platform, which, by the way, I did think it was kind of funny because we spent all this time on Mariah's like jumping lessons because they thought she was going to have to like jump up and like grab smash a something. Yeah. Or smash something. Yeah. And it it wasn't. It was just you just have to jump off the platform into the water. Um as so, I said, again, everything with Sega is unimportant. Yeah. Yeah. Very. And, and also, I was kind of like, I don't know if I was Mariah, I'd be like, why did you air that? That doesn't make me look good. And it was so unimportant to the rest of the season. But anyway, you got nothing else uh, going on. Sega. Nothing. Truly, truly. So, uh, yeah. So jump off the platform and then swim over to uh, another small platform, which had like two crates on it and then uh, jump off of that and dive down. Uh, two of the players on each tribe had to grab a net full of buoys and then uh, swim to the end where there's uh, another plat- a big platform that everyone uh, gets to at the end. And so, yeah, once everyone gets to the end, then one player gets off of the big platform onto a smaller platform and then shoots the buoys into three nets. And the first tribe to get one buoy in all three nets wins. So and- Sega gets the lead. Hunter mm-hmm. is a sharpshooter, though, so no lead can stop Hunter from winning. Um, correct. I think, actually, if I if my suspicions and my sources are correct, mm-hmm. uh, cut this out from the episode when we edit, by the way, Wesley. Mm-hmm. So I think Liz paid Survivor to give her the best player um, on their team, so they win every challenge that's important. Um, oh, I think with her fat sacks of cash, she sl- yeah. sent some to Jeff. She's like, hey, right. whoever's the best player here, put him on my team. So I, so I'm not going to tribal. And Jeff's like, yeah. I got you. I got you. Fair enough. The show's been yeah. low. Been, we're in the budget era of Survivor. We need the money. Thank you, Liz. <laughs> All right. So now the we can resume. Era. We can resume. We can resume the, okay. that part. That part we're cutting out is yep. just for you, Rebecca. Yeah. All right. Okay, so perfect. Hunter is a sharpshooter. And for no discernible reason, he's mm-hmm. on the same tribe as Liz. I cannot say why for those who are listening. Yeah. But he, they do get first. And yes. Sega somehow gets second. As you said, Tim struggled on the platform. I do want to point out the first mm-hmm. challenge. I think Tim's issue is he put his whole body in the platform and everyone else just mm-hmm. put like one foot. Mm-hmm. And, and he's a bigger guy. So he mm-hmm. inst- was going to struggle with the tipping the platform anyways. But here he struggled. It kind of I thought he hurt himself when he jumped. Mm-hmm. Oh, I thought he actually yeah. did. Yeah, it was like pretty because he, he like jumped onto the platform and like almost tipped it over and was barely hanging on for such a long period of time. That yeah, it was kind of this awkward moment of like, is he gonna fall in the water? Is he fine? Like, what's going on? I thought he on? hurt but, his ankles or knees or something. Yeah, yeah, but he was able to hang on, which was you know yeah, good for him. And Yanu loses again, but we don't really have to talk about them. <laughs> yeah. All right. So <laughs> I did in- want to point out just one thing that I think is cool about Hunter, and like is probably <laughs> helping him. Like he, I feel like, and maybe this is a weird thing to point out. But I think that he almost doesn't I, he doesn't care so much about like how he looks winning the challenge as he does just like winning the challenge. So like when he was shooting baskets, this challenge, granny he was style. doing like yeah. granny style, which worked. I mean, he was I think he made did he make just three shots, I think, and sunk all three of them. The way or he might it was have presented. It looked one. like it was one, two, three. I don't think he missed. Yeah. Any. And, and, you know, like, you know, the others were doing fine, but like they were shooting it more like, you know, basketball style. And I feel like all of that to say, it's like, I I think Hunter is, is, uh, that's potentially a sign of him being like, I don't know if humble is the right word, but yeah, just like, I really appreciated that he was like, he's just so concerned about the result and he doesn't care if he looks, you know, a certain way on TV or whatever. He's just like, we're going to win this. And yeah, it's working. Like he's he's absolutely killing it. So good for him. I haven't gone down this rabbit hole deep enough to know um exactly. I just seen glimpses, but on Twitter or whatever it's called, mm-hmm. X, I've seen oh, yeah. I believe I've seen Carson seem a little bit salty that people like Hunter and don't like him as mm. much. And I think what Carson fails to understand is that is that Carson was just doing these all his preparation for himself, mm-hmm. uh, and Hunter did it literally for children. Mm, yeah, completely different optics. Yeah, the optics were different. Like Carson looked like a spoiled rich kid preparing for the game, mm-hmm. um, and, and it's it, that's how it looked. I'm not saying he is, 
Mm -hmm. Uh, But I am saying it's how it looked. Hunter looked like somebody who gave up becoming rich to make challenges for children. And it's like the optics are way different. And I'm not saying Hunter doesn't have money because it's not cheap to do what he did. It's not. Mm -hmm. But the optics to the casual viewer, that's how it looks. And also, as you said, Hunter seems very humble. Mm -hmm. So it's just like, how do you not like Hunter? (laughs) Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So anyways, I say that's why I see because I, th- I, I think it was Carson who posted a, a meme of of him and Hunter being and comparing them. And I'm like, I'm like, I don't think Carson's getting it. Yeah. Yeah. Because I think I think he was wanting to be more beloved than he was coming off his season. And I think mm. people are more enamored by Jam Jam and Carolyn than they were by Carson, which is understandable. Yeah. Jam Jam, Carolyn, super unique mm-hmm. characters who also big personalities. Not, yeah. to say, not to say that Carson yeah. was a big personality, but those two were huge personalities. Yeah. Of the Tika 3. And I so. think also, like, potentially, I mean, based on <laughs> what I recall of what he talked about in the show, I do think Carson, like, grew a lot, like, I, just as a person, like, before the show. Mm-hmm. And so, like, it, like that's that's super awesome for him. And, like, I understand why physically? he would be super proud of that. Well, physically, but also just, like, yeah, I mean, he 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 seemed to be very disciplined. Like he was practicing the challenges. I mean, you have to be disciplined for him to, because I, I think he like bulked up for the show or whatever. Yeah, that's what I meant. But yeah. like, yeah, and so like, I think he he had a lot of personal growth before the show, which is like super great and definitely something to be proud of. But yeah, it's like I I almost feel like he he wanted the world to see that, but because we don't know the version of him before he was on Survivor, we just didn't get to see that as much. So yeah, we never saw skinny. Out of shape, yeah. Carson, we just saw Buff Carson who prepared with his 3D <laughs> printer, which, by the way, is not that expensive. But yep. the optics to the casual person who doesn't have a 3D printer is that that is mm-hmm. expensive, and you just did it for yourself. Yeah. So, and then you have Hunter who gave up a medical field, medical job to make challenges for children, and it's like yeah. that's the difference. So, anyways, just want to point that out because I thought that was interesting. I'm not mm-hmm. knocking anybody. Carson's younger. He, you know, people. I, I one of whom I I'm I'm not saying at the same age I wouldn't be salty too. I'd be like, oh, what the heck? I mm-hmm. did the same thing, you guys. Why is Hunter yeah. getting all the love? <laughs> so, anyways. Yeah. I, I absolutely am not saying that I wouldn't be the, the same as Carson at his age. So, anyways. All right. So uh yeah. They uh Yanu loses, everyone's like, we're voting off Banu. And this is probably the worst part of the episode for me personally. Yeah. Because I agree. Banu comes across as pathetic. That's why I was trying mm-hmm. to say earlier. It just was pathetic to watch. It was, mm-hmm. And the music and everything. I was supposed to sympathize with them. And I didn't. There was no sympathy. Yeah. Because we. this is not like out of nowhere his tribe turned on him. This is a long time coming. And it was all self-inflicted. And he's a 40-year-old mm-hmm. adult. Like, yeah. I don't know. I, uh, maybe yeah. if I knew him personally. But even the people who knew him personally seemed to be very much annoyed at him. Mm-hmm. So when everyone doesn't like him, I've seen him screw up his own game. And I know everything. In comparison to what they know, they didn't see everything he's done. I've seen everything. Mm-hmm. I mean, I know it's an edit show. I've seen way more than what they've seen of what he's right. done. And they're in mad yeah. at him. And I'm annoyed at him. And I'm be- and the show's trying to make me feel sympathetic. So I'm not a little annoyed at the show for trying to manipulate me into liking Banu. Mm-hmm. Eh. Yeah. Oh, Rebecca, what do you think? Yeah. No, I, I agree with yeah what you're saying. I, I felt like especially... Yeah, especially at this point, because like, I mean, he literally has nothing like I, I think he said that, but, you know, he did, did doesn't have any allies, he doesn't have a vote. He can't play a shot in the dark. He has no idol like he has literally nothing. And yeah, like I, I understand why that would be frustrating and discouraging. But I, we've also seen other people in similar positions who have handled it a lot Take better it on the chin. Yeah. And, the and chin. have been like look, you know, I think I've exhausted every option. Um, you know, I did what I could. It's really sad that, like, I failed, but, you know, I can walk away with my head held high. And I felt like Banu didn't do that, which, again, I mean, like you pointed out earlier, like, he hasn't eaten for eight days or however yeah. long it's been. So, like, that could definitely be part of it. <laughs> and I'm not saying I would have been able to handle this better than he did, but, yeah, it was just kind of, like, almost uncomfortable to watch, yes. where it's just like, wow, we're just watching someone who's just like so totally demoralized and like have a mental breakdown just, 
Yeah. Yeah, mm. exactly. It was it was like this isn't fun TV. It's like no. this is he's just actually having a breakdown. I would have rather so. us checked in on Sega and see what unimportant stuff they're up to than watch this. <laughs> yeah, frankly. exactly. I mean, at one point, God, Bonnie's bit like, God, I thought you wanted me to win. Why don't you airdrop me an idol? I, I know I'm making yeah. up words for him, but that's what it felt like. Mm-hmm. like. Why didn't God drop an idol right into my bag for me? Like, yeah, yeah, I, that's not how this works. <laughs> right. <laughs> I don't think you understand. I don't think you yeah. <laughs> so yeah. anyways, we go to tribal and Banu gives, I feel like part two or a, a retelling mm-hmm. of his, I feel like I've heard this before his mm-hmm. backstory. Did he not, uh, do we not already do this? Yeah. Yeah. I think we did. Yeah. In, in the first episode, the first episode. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So we're, Why? yeah (laughs) it really does i'm gonna be honest like it yeah it really does feel like this season and again i hate to say this because i love the 90 minute episodes but so far i'm like i wish some of these episodes were 60 minutes because like yeah we're just filling so much time with like repeated information and just stuff that doesn't matter i don't know so i know i mentioned this before over the course of 45 podcasts and even in the previews Mm -hmm. jeff said that they filmed 45 with the intention of it being 90 and they mm-hmm. filmed 46, the intention of being 60 minutes. Um, mm-hmm. And they said, but they were ready to edit further because Jeff's a good yes man for CBS. And, and to be fair, it's how he's gotten his job and that's how he's in the position he's in. So good for him. I'm not yeah, knocking Jeff at all. Enough. So I'm just yep. saying Jeff smartly was like, oh, but if they want to do more time, we'll do more time because you want to keep your job and keep the show going. Mm-hmm. Uh, so smart on him. But they did film this. So I don't understand all the logistics of how to shoot Survivor. And I don't know mm-hmm. how the producers on Island work. But the producers on the island are like, okay, we only have to do 60 minutes. I don't know how the notes work, Rebecca. I don't know. I mean, you know, mm-hmm. how f- I mean, have you worked on films as well? I don't know how that affects yeah. this show specifically, though. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I yeah, can imagine. I mean, this show is certainly more complex than most of the shows I've worked on in terms of just like the amount of quote unquote characters that you're trying to keep track of and like things are happening in real time. So, yeah, I I would love to just be a fly on the wall and, and see how they handle all this because I'm sure it's a lot. I mean, I'm more interested. That's why I'm actually truly more interested in just like I would want to just watch the filming of the show more so than being on the show personally. That's just me, though. Uh, just because I'd be like, how does how do you guys do all of this? It is like is this is a massive task. This is not easy. And it's all in real time. Like it's not. We're not shooting a film where it's like, all right, we'll just, you know, we'll redo, we'll redo that scene. No, just, just, just shoot it. So and the same with Amazing Race, by the way, that's wild. They think they jump in countries mm. in that show. So, yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's not easy. These cameramen <laughs> are just going to places they've never been to. And they're just having to f- just do it. All right. Yeah. So anyways, <laughs> just uh, running with, around with, with people who also have not been to these places. And it's just like sometimes it feels like a free for all on that show. So anyways, Survivor, they yeah. same locations all the time. So they got that part nailed down. But what mm-hmm. I am going to say is that I wonder how much of the show feeling long in the season as usual casting, but also it's like, mm-hmm. I don't know how they, but as we point out, there's only been, this only challenge the only season, sorry, the only episode with two challenges, 45. I feel like a lot of the episodes had two challenges per episode. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. This seems correct. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it did help. And this season, not so much, but also, yeah, I don't know how that affects the filming. I don't know. Maybe did they edit all these episodes originally or most of them for 60 minutes and then later have to add stuff in to make it yeah. to 90? Because that's how episode two felt. Let me tell you. <laughs> yeah, that would actually make a lot of sense just based on how this feels, because there's like there's certain scenes or like specific chunks of the episode that feel like, yeah, disconnected. Scene. Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. Mariah jumping is as a secret scene. That is that is that one thousand percent in any of your seasons one event secret scene. Unless Mariah goes on to win, that doesn't feel like a big toe scene though. Like D, that feels like that just feels like they threw it in for funsies because they need to fill time. So I almost I truly wonder how much of the show was edited and produced with the thought of sixty minutes, and when they're told well, we're doing ninety minutes now, and they're like, oh okay, well we have the sixty minute episode already laid out, you know. We've already we've already planned out the episode. All right, so what are we gonna add in to extend it to ninety? Because that's I almost feel like if you go back, I wonder which scenes you could just pick out and be like, if this wasn't ninety minutes, this wouldn't be here. If this you know if this wouldn't be here, this wouldn't be here. And then you have your sixty minute episode, and you could really see what is important, what is the sixty minute episode. So not to get too in the weeds for those listening, but 
also this podcast we talk heavily talk about the edit we heavily talk about what the show's trying to tell us that's like this whole channel all my story videos i'm like what is the show trying to tell us what is the story trying to tell us i throw in my an- analysis but i really am more interested what is the show trying to tell us because they're never just gonna sometimes they could just come out and say it but that's part of the intrigue is, is the story and what is the story really telling us especially when we don't know the answer already so I don't know. I wonder how many of these episodes were already planned out to be 90. I assume that they haven't already like edited through the finale. For example, I could be wrong. Mm-hmm. They yeah. did film these like 10 months ago, nine months ago. So they could have, I guess. So I wonder if the back half of the season will feel better. Maybe they'll, they'll have had more time to plan out the 90 minutes. Whereas here, I wonder when CBS told them they're going to 90 because throughout 45, we didn't know they were going to 90. I feel like 45 was the, they're like, let's see how 45 goes. And it was a success. And CBS at some point said, all right, we're doing 90 for 46. Figure it out. That's how I feel. That's how I feel it was. I feel like 46 was mostly planned out with 60 minutes. And CBS said, actually, you're doing 90. And they're like, well, okay. I guess we're going to fill time now. All right. Well, Bonnie's voted off. We don't actually vote. Who cares? Okay. So next time on Survivor, <laughs> we see Nami looking for an idol. Uh, But does Nami, am I mistaken? Is nobody, a, Randon had it and he, and he does, obviously he was voted off and I'm sorry, medically mm-hmm. evacuated with it. So mm-hmm. I wonder if it's going to be the same exact beware advantage or is it just me a uh, normal yeah. idol? Yeah. Well, cause I don't think, did he tell anyone about it? He told Venus or if showed, I recall. Okay. Oh, that's right. Yep. Okay. But did he show it to her? I don't know if he physically show it, showed it to her, but either way he did tell her it, he had it. Yeah. So, and we saw so nothing from Venus like, this episode. Yeah, I kind of feel like, yeah, if it, like if someone on the tribe like knows about the beware advantage and like what it is, I feel like they would have to change it up. But yeah, I don't know. Oh, I see. Did he tell Venus all the details? Yeah, I don't yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Because otherwise she would know before opening it like exactly, you know, what it is. But I feel like Venus, this was the episode for her to go out and look. She's the only one that knew Rand and had it. Mm-hmm. but did Randy give her the information of where it was found I don't think so I think Randy was like well there's no one else I could trust I'll trust Venus it wasn't like Venus is yeah. my number one let me tell her everything you know right right so anyways you have anything else for uh for next time on Survivor um no I think we covered it all cool cool cool, cool. I mean Tim did say he, Tim did hint that he's mad but mm-hmm. we'll see how we'll see how the unimportant secret scenes are next week all yes. right, so what's new on Patreon? As always, podcasts are ad-free. Uh, we got our Fantasy League going on. It is, if you're listening now and you haven't joined, four weeks have passed. You can definitely join. It's for all open, all paid patrons. But you're four weeks behind. But then again, Bonnie was on my team. Maybe you could still beat me. You know what I mean? <laughs> That's all I'm saying. And I forgot to vote the second week, so. Yes, Rebecca forgot a whole week of voting. Mary, yep. I'll, Rebecca, I also had to remind because Mary almost forgot today, so. Yep. <laughs> yeah i feel like like i said to you today like i need to just set a reminder because i always forget i need to set like a weekly reminder yeah. i've been the weekly reminder to you and mary to make a hey, make sure to vote so anyways yep. uh those that's on patreon i just uploaded the sandra versus parvati battle for the throne traders video that's over on patreon uh if you watch traders this season it was pretty good between those two I also Mm -hmm. just uploaded a video called the worst survivor reunion moments. And my goodness, did I not, I I asked people what (laughs) moments I should include. And I did not realize how many times Jeff just went off the rails. Yeah. (laughs) For lack of a better word. So, uh, yeah, that's over on Patreon and then boss and Rob's heroes versus villains stories on Patreon, but also coming soon. Redemption Island, obviously. His, that, that's that's going to be a big one. I mean, that's, that season is the Boston Rob show. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, if you want to support our channel, we greatly appreciate it. Link in the description. You can join for free for the podcast and anything beyond the podcast. That's what the paid tiers are for. All right. Question of the week, Rebecca. Yeah. You want to go first? You want me to go first? Um, I think I went first last week. So why don't you go first? Okay. All right. My question is, Rebecca, which season of the new era mm-hmm. has their final, has the final three... F- I'm trying. I didn't. I couldn't figure out how to word this question. So let me know if it's confusing. Which okay. season of the new era has their final three all born in the same year? Does that make sense? Oh, okay. So like the final three were all born in the same year. Okay. I can't say what year it is because that might right. give it away. So it'd be too obvious. Okay. Your um, options are forty-one through forty-five. 
<laughs> yes. Okay. Let's see. I feel like I don't think it was. Uh, would it have been? I want to say it was like an earlier one. Was it forty one? No, it was forty five. Forty five. Ah, that was my second. Jake guess. Okay. Austin and D all shared the same year of nineteen ninety six. Wow, that's mm-hmm. crazy. Uh huh. Very interesting. Part of that yeah. bias that we were talking about of everybody being from the same area, everybody being the same ages, uh, everybody, yeah. <laughs> yep. everybody having yep. the same kind of jobs. So that's uh, fascinating, huh? That pink buff we talked about from Here's Versus Villains, I got a few messages. Apparently, mm-hmm. somebody has one on eBay. I don't know if it was posted oh. after our podcast, but it was at eight hundred dollars. Oh, good heavens! There you okay. go. There for so, a, for a buff that's pink. So we just need to get Liz to buy that for us. Oh, oh, Liz, Liz <laughs> the sponsor of this podcast, one thousand percent. Good, yeah. Would, she wouldn't even notice the money's missing. Easy. In fact, she would probably upbid herself. So it's listed yeah. for eight hundred. She'll give you two grand. Easy. Liz, Liz would drop a Liz would drop a cool ten grand on that. <laughs> easy, easy. No problem. Yeah. All right. So follow up question uh, yes. related to the first question. Which okay. Se- old school season. Had mm-hmm. both of keyword being both of their finalists share the same mm-hmm. year as well. So mm-hmm. there's been one season where it was a final three and one season where it was a final two. This is a final two season. So mm-hmm. your options are season two, the Australian Outback, season mm-hmm. four, Marquesas, uh, season eight, All Stars, season 11, Guatemala, or season 12, Exile Island. Interesting. Interesting. Um, I am willing to tell you who is in these final twos in case you forgot. That would be super helpful because <laughs> I, I don't, I have such a bad memory when it comes right, to stuff Aust- like this. So Australian Outback, Australian Outback, you got Colby and Tina, Marquesas, yep. you have Nalia and Vesepia, All Stars, mm-hmm. you have Robin Amber, Guatemala, you have Stephanie and Danny, and Exile Island, you have Aris and Danielle. Okay. Okay. Um, would it be was it is it rob and amber are they the mm, same age nope it's actually no. exile island aris and danielle shared the same year fascinating the only other okay. times ever happened besides 45 i put wow. all stars in there thinking that that might one might fool you i was like yeah i need one that sounds did. sounds correct <laughs> yeah yeah very good <laughs> yeah all right what's your question nice. for me okay all right so my question for you is what is the only season where the pre-jury boots outnumbered those who reached the jury phase? Ooh. Okay. So your options are Cook Islands, Edge of Extinction, or Palau. I'm sorry. It's uh, we're talking about pre-jury, post-jury, or pre-merge, post-merge. Um, pre. So the pre-jury boots yeah. outnumbered those who reached the jury. So there were okay. eleven people eliminated before the jury phase mm. and then nine that what ended were, up on the jury. What were my so, options again? Cook Islands, Edge of Extinction, and Palau. Edge of Extinction, I think, had one of the largest juries of all time, so it's not that. Palau, mm-hmm. the jury started with Kobe. I'm trying to think how many people were eliminated on Oolong before we got to that point. All of Oolong was gone. There were literally was we had Wanda and Jonathan go and then nine or eight members of Oolong get eliminated. Mm-hmm. Oh, that is ten, and then Kobe goes. And Stephanie's last for me, so that's ten. I don't think it's Palau. I'm gonna say Cook Islands, but okay, I'm saying Cook Islands. Okay, it was it was Palau. Ah, so yeah, but but you but I think you had it. Like your math was right because yeah, there were eleven people before the jury started. Well, so there was twenty then, people that season, and yes. all of Oolong's eliminated, which is eight. Plus the two yep. at the beginning. That's only 10. Yes. Who's, who's the and 11th? Then, I don't know who the 11th was. I gotta but look your math that. was... You, yeah, you were Shoot. right there. Shoot. I'm going to give you half a point. Or no, more. I'm going to give you two thirds of a point for that. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> Even though we're not, we're not keeping score. So Yes. Yeah, I'm, you know what? We should just give each other like random points or like... Like you get a gold star or just like random things that like does not matter in the long run, you know? Okay. I looked up on the wiki on the wiki why I was missing somebody. Um, in episode, I believe five or six in Palau, Mm -hmm. they had a double tribal where both tribes went to tribal. So Uh, all of Oolong plus Juan and Jonathan plus Willard, who looked like the immunity idol that season, were all eliminated. 
before the oh, holy cow, dude, that is. Yep. Yeah. Crazy season. <laughs> All right. Let's move on to TV ratings. Episode one, we had 4.9 million. Episode two, predictably, people turned off the television. 4.43 yeah. million because it was too long. It was too, mm -hmm. too long. Episode yeah, three, about, two hours was like, oof. It was. Episode three, bounce back up. As you can see on the screen if you're here on YouTube with us. Episode three, bounce back up. Uh, 4.78 million. So mm -hmm. not quite the 4.9 we started with. But the key part here is that it blew away all the competition on Wednesday night. Had the highest views of the night by 1.4 million. Wow. And had Very the highest nice. ratings too for the 18 to 49 age range by almost mm -hmm. double. So, despite the fact that they've put out so far a very okay season, a season that's definitely been aired on television, that's for sure, <laughs> they're still blowing yep. away the competition, which means the competition is not doing very well this season because yeah. Survivor <laughs> this season <laughs> is okay. Is okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a season. Any thoughts about that, Rebecca? Uh, no. I mean, it's cool that you know, starting to gain momentum. I I really hope that. Like you were saying earlier that, you know, the, the end of this season picks up speed and and is a lot, I don't know, a lot tighter than the episodes we've seen so far. So hopefully that will be reflected in the ratings. Yeah, I don't know how much notice CBS gave Survivor that they're changing 46 to 90 minutes. But mm -hmm. Jeff said preseason of 45. And that was as of the preseason of 45, like right before 45 aired that 46 is 60 minutes unless they told them differently. So as of like it was August or September, I believe this was September, mm -hmm. August or September, he said that. So I don't know how much notice they had since that's what I'm saying. How much of 46 was planned out to be like they right. got done filming. They work immediately on the stuff. They don't like sit around and wait. They right. work immediately. Yeah. So how much 46 has already been planned out to be 60 minutes? They had to go back and add stuff in, like make yeah. a director's cut of episodes, basically. And that's what we're getting mm -hmm. with 46. So I don't know. I don't know when CBS told them. Maybe they told them around Christmas. They're like, actually, it was a huge success. Make, make, no, you got Merry two months. Merry Christmas. <laughs> Merry Christmas. You got two months to figure this out. And yep. they already spent all that time. I don't know. But that's why I'm hoping the back end of the season, uh, the editors and producers have, hopefully they have more time to, to make the back half stronger than the front half, which I'm sure the front half was going to take the brunt of the hit for a re-edit. By the way, uh, I know I said this pre pre previously, but uh, 42, I don't have any proof, was 1,000% re-edited. I oh, yeah. watch 42 again. If you ever watch it again, watch 41 and then watch 42 and tell me 42 is not re-edited. Like 42 mm. is all the same things that 41 has and yet mm, feels a bit re-edited. Feels, feels yeah. like uh, they didn't like how 41 went, the reaction to it. And they went back and they did everything they could to make 42 as above average as possible. Mm -hmm. in the edit in the edit so just my opinion i have no proof none no proof <laughs> don't take this is not the gospel i have no proof <laughs> i am like uh, okay i have a joke but i'm not gonna say it all right let's move on to winner analysis it's not, some people are gonna be annoyed if i say it all right so winner analysis yes top three rebecca top three yeah i want to point out yeah. week one i had bonu my top three don't i feel silly Oof. yeah you know i think i don't know if i had him in my i think I think he went from number one week one to like last place the second week. <laughs> yeah, you you did it. It was dirty. pretty uh, violent. Um, Who's your number three? Yeah. Okay, so my number three is Jim, and yes, you see I, it now. Yeah i I think that out of everyone on Sega, like she's getting the most focus, at least like the most focus that matters, like. The stuff about Mariah not being able to jump, like none of that matters. No, that's um, we've seen her make. Content. Yes, yeah, we've seen her make you know a game move by the whole beware advantage thing that she did. Um, I feel like she's gotten a couple winner quotes. There was the one this this week about like you know my job is to win, but can also have some fun along the way. Um, there's been some others like even in the opening episode and stuff. So yeah, I mean you know yeah it, it's hard to pick people who haven't been to tribal yet but i think that she's in a really solid spot just in terms of the edit so yeah she's my number three what about you we're all having a hard time reading these tribes that haven't been to tribal yet tribal really yeah. tells you almost everything you need to know it so does. gem for me is not top three but i am high on gem i said this last week with mary when i did her full analysis which we will do again tomorrow mary and i will mm -hmm. do 
full winner analysis of everyone remaining. Jem will be high up. Uh, she may even be the top of Sega. I don't know. Now, I wonder how much yeah. of her content, Rebecca, has just been because she got the beware advantage, though. Yeah. Yeah, that is fair. Um, but I mean, at the same time, like, yeah, the the way that she found it was like smart, I guess. Like it wasn't, I don't know, it wasn't a crazy move or anything, but like she kept it to herself, was able to, you know, not get caught with it and stuff. So that was cool. I can't believe I put Bonnie on my fantasy team. I had the option. <laughs> I considered, I was like, I should just have and Kenzie. I was like, no, that's too obvious. That's yeah. too obvious. I said to myself. I was like, Bonnie seems like a wild card. This is what I get. This is my punishment. All right. So my number three is Hunter. Uh, I mm. am kind of, I'm why I'm high on Hunter at the same time. It's just that I don't really feel like there's where this is like uh, if you watch the NFL or NBA or anything like that, and they have draft classes, some years the draft class is really strong. You're like, wow, there's a lot of top prospects here. Like, I don't like, there's so many choices that these top teams could take this season. I feel like I am lacking. This is a weak draft class a weak class of top prospects. I feel like I have two personally. I mm-hmm. personally feel like there's two top prospects and everyone else is kind of like maybe so hunters does not my top two prospects. I like him. I think he's associated with somebody who's very important. Here's the thing. If we really think Tevin could just be a fan favorite who loses at the end, who would come out of that deal and survive Hunter? Yeah. Maybe Hunt, maybe Hunter, Hunter survives that goes final yeah. three and gets the credit. And you know, I don't know. So we've seen mm-hmm. that happen before uh, where the person in the, D, you know, so anyways, Hunter's number three. I like him. Uh, he is shown positively at almost at every point. Lots of people defending Venus last week saying that she saw through through his facade. And I'm like, I don't really understand what his facade is. He's just laying low. But Venus mm-hmm. like, I see right through it. Randon, don't you see it? You <laughs> idiot. Like the way Venus talks <laughs> had me almost ignore the if Venus is right or not because she's just so negative when she talks. Mm. Uh, yeah. Which I understand, Lon. I was like all week. I was seeing comments. I'm like, I'm like, I see the edit, guys. I I also get it, but I'm looking for winners. And Venus is not a winner. Nothing can be presented as a winner from Venus. Hunter has mm-hmm. potential to be a winner. So yeah, I, uh, number three might be high, but I just, as I said, I don't, I don't feel like there's, we don't have like a handful of top prospects here, in my opinion. I feel like I got two. Yeah. But you may disagree, yeah. Rebecca. Who's your number two? Yeah, I'm curious who your number two or your your top two are. But uh, yeah, my number two is Tiffany. Uh, uh, I'll she's ditto been, that. Ditto. Mine's also Yeah, Tiffany. okay. Excellent, excellent. Yeah, I feel like she was kind of laying low this episode, which feels weird to say because we spent so much time on Yanu. But just in the sense that like out of those four people on that tribe, I feel like she got the, less, the least amount of screen time. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I think she's a smart player. Um... I liked the way that she's like handled certain things with Banu, like the whole thing, even when he was like having his breakdown in this episode and she was like, look, I'm still not going to lie to you. Like, I'm going to tell you the truth and like, here's why. And, you know, I I like you as a person and whatever. But uh, yeah, I think she's like a smart player. Obviously, she's in a really bad tribe. So like, we'll see how things go post merge. The main concern right now is like, going into a merge with people knowing that like she and Q are really close, but I kind of see Q being targeted first before her mm-hmm. uh, in a merge Same. situation. So I think she could definitely survive that and uh, yeah, go from there. So yeah, I like Tiffany a lot. She's number two and uh, yeah, I hope she goes far. I think Tiffany's the one's going to come out of this. Uh, Yon who tried the, the cleanest, I don't know if that's the right word, mm-hmm. but probably in the best position basically based on what we've seen so far. I really like when she told Bonnie to stand up and stop being pathetic. I know she didn't say those yes. exact words, but I'm like, yes, man up, dude, stand up. And Kenzie's like, this dude's yeah. 15 years older than me. Like, what is he doing? But anyways, <laughs> right. uh, Tiffany, I f- I'm with you. Like, even though she's presented as saying um, negative things about Jess and now Bonnie, it mm-hmm. comes across a bit different because there's so many other people echoing what she's saying. Whereas when Venus is doing it, nobody's echoing her. Mm, so when yeah, nobody echoes you it's like you're by yourself being a negative energy when tiffany's being negative where's all everyone else is doing it too so it mm-hmm. it kind of shadows or hides and it's a purposeful decision to do that they could just edit so only tiffany is saying these things but they don't they show everyone else on jess and now on bonu i forget jelinski jelinski was such a mess i forget <laughs> if everyone is dunking on jelinski as well maybe he was maybe everyone was dunking yeah. on jelinski so Tiffany, 
is portrayed in such a way where it's like she's not she's she's not standing out on the negativity. She is just part of it. But I do think she's in a good position, and I think come emerge, she's not going to be the first one seen as a target. I think Kenzie will be, and I think Hugh will be. I think Tiffany's the least of the three in t- terms of a target on her back. And I got mentioned my number three for Hunter. I, I, my, my concern is that come emerge, he's going to be seen as a challenge threat for good reason. Mm, yeah. So yeah. he very well could drop to, when I do my full winner analysis with Mary. I'm not locked in on number three for him, but I'm with you on the number two. So is your number mm-hmm. one changed, Rebecca? Or is it? Because if it's still it number, has. Good, because I was like, if it was still Maria, I was going to be like, are you sure? <laughs> All right, who's your number one? Yeah. Yeah. My number one is Tevin. Mm, um, I mean, come to my yeah. side. Yeah, I feel like we've kind of talked this through a bit, but like, I do feel like it's so obvious that like, I feel like it's too obvious, which is why I've resisted putting him in my top three for so long. They've done um, it before, though. Uh, yeah. And, and I'm still like, yeah, next week this may change, but. Yeah, I just feel like this episode, like, he, it it wasn't just that he, like, got attention, but he seems to be in control, like, the number one person in his tribe, and he's in a great tribe that keeps winning, and, um, yeah, I I think he's going to be a really good strategic, social, and even, like, challenge player, so, yeah, I I like him a lot, Uh, I think I, I could see him winning for sure, again, I feel like it's still too obvious but uh yeah right now he's he's number one what about you yep Tevin's number one for me obviously nice. uh, i've been saying every yeah. i think i've been saying almost every week especially since yeah. episode two i know i've been saying since at least episode two so Tevin's number one they literally are cutting out scenes of negativity and like mm-hmm. these are the red flags i look for these are things i'm like that's a secret scene that means that they didn't want you to see it but they also did let you know it's a like they, they like they didn't want the casual audience to see it they put it on the channel that mm-hmm. gets like a couple thousand views in these videos. They know it's just for us hardcore fans. Those those who listen to these long podcasts with Survivor mm-hmm. are not the casual audience. My father is the casual audience. He right. could not tell yeah. you who won a season or two ago. That's that's mm-hmm. the casual audience. And that's fine. That that's not a knock against any of them. I'm just saying that they put it on the channel knowing that's who's gonna watch these. My dad's not my dad's not going on Survivor CBS YouTube channel watching secret scenes of Survivor. If I told him that right. they, those even existed, he'd be like, but why? <laughs> who's just be like but why, why? yeah anyways uh yeah number one and they cut out negative scenes about him everything left in is positive i like how soda is doing what tevin was doing but tevin notices that soda's doing it and so he does it himself and nothing mm-hmm. negative is shown about him doing it nobody's like yep you know not even venus not even venus says yeah you know what tevin's <laughs> tevin's doing what soda's doing or tevin's being <laughs> a big threat no not a, it's just shown as Tevin caught into soda. Tevin's going to outwit her. That's how it's presented. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 So we Wouldn't really it be crazy if, if that happens in an episode or two where Venus is like, guys, Tevin is such a social threat. And then she like stirs everyone up and gets him voted out. Like we go to the mergatory <laughs> four days ago. Yes. <laughs> four days yeah. ago. Exactly. All right. Survivor four days ago. I didn't know about this. All right. <laughs> That's the thing. Based on what we, this is just based on what we've been shown so far. Obviously, yeah, things totally. can change on a dime. Who yeah. knows? You get that post merge where everyone splits into two groups again for some unknown reason that doesn't make any sense. Just keep them in tribes. Mm-hmm. You're gonna do that. Tevin could go on that. I don't know. I'm just saying at the moment, mm-hmm. not like what am I gonna knock against Tevin? They hide everything. Yeah. That knocks Tevin in secret scenes. That's you know, we talked about mm-hmm. last year, last season. It's like they're hiding people's emotional backstory in secret scenes. So those people aren't winning. No, just right. the secret scenes a bigger part than I thought they would be. Like starting yeah. last season, I really realized like how important these secret scenes really are. Yeah. So, anyways, yep. uh, Tevin's number one, and I am these top two prospects. I think we're both on the same page, Tevin and Tiffany. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Beyond that, I like you say Gem's your number three, but like how like gun to your head, do you really think Gem's gonna win? You know? Yeah. To be honest, I I've struggled with that. I think I have like four people that i was like any of them could be number three yeah like honestly hunter's number three but that's only because i haven't critically thought about who my number three is this yeah. is just a carryover from last week and i'm like yeah sure why not so yeah. when Fair i think enough. about it critically before i podcast with mary tomorrow i'll three think mm-hmm. it but as of now it's like yeah i don't know no one it's not yeah. like 44 where we're like okay these people are the top three because the stupid match at you know right yeah well, thank you thank goodness i'm glad it's not that obvious but all right yeah well let's move on to people's questions as usual this season we have several questions for us to answer 
So our first question is from ba -ba -da -ba, JJ Mara. Did Bonnie win your heart? Uh, do you, mm. Yeah. Did Bonnie win your heart? It's two part question. Yeah. Um, for me personally, I felt like he did at first, but this last episode, yeah, it was, it was just hard to watch. And I, I felt like, especially towards the end, it was, it was harder to root for him. Mm. So maybe half a heart. Yeah. Uh, no. And the follow-up question is, do you think he truly won those million hearts? Now, mm. here's the thing, Rebecca, as we just talked about yeah. during TV ratings, show's yeah. getting almost 5 million. I, I, let's say almost let's say five million because people sure. watch on paramount plus i'm sure more than that five million yeah. a conservative number mm -hmm. counting paramount plus mm -hmm. do you think one-fifth of the audience has given their heart to bonu mm. i don't know it's also like yeah trying to get into the headspace of someone who's maybe watching a little more casually maybe i don't think it's likely I'm going to say it's no. possible. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think that's fair. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And next question is it's me. Connor says, can you believe that by episode four, only 10 votes have been cast this whole season? Wow. Yeah. Well, we, I mean, tonight there was no votes cast. Bonnie. Right. I don't know if it's a, it's not a quit, but it was more of like, yeah. everyone's publicly said what they're going to do. And I still think they should have to vote by the way, personally, because what if that's yeah. just a bluff? Yeah, no, I fully agree. Yeah, because it's like, you can say whatever you want, but until you actually put a name on parchment, like, doesn't mean anything. Yeah, so when Jeff's like, oh, we don't really have to vote. Uh, Jeff, yeah. yes, we do, because yes. what if I'm just yes, bluffing? <laughs> yeah. yeah. What if can I'm just bluffing? you imagine if someone was bluffing so well that they even Jeff thought, Jeff out? Yeah. <laughs> they even Jeff was faked out, and Jeff has all the inside info, yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Next question is from John Brumfield asks, is Hunter putting a huge target on his back come the merge with this challenge success? John, mm -hmm. that's a good question. I am thinking the same thing, though. We it has been a long time, specifically season 40, since we've had someone win four individual immunity challenges or more. And I mm -hmm. am hoping that maybe this season Hunter does that. I want to see yeah. somebody go on a challenge streak that just disrupt that. Yeah, sorry. That just disrupts what's happening. Mm hmm. For, yeah, I love when somebody goes on a streak and just ruins plans. It's fun to watch. Yes, 100%. And especially when somebody like Hunter, who's not even like an annoying character. He's yes. Just, he's just like dominating challenges. People are like, freaking Hunter. Phone my first chance. Like, <laughs> but like, you can't because he just wins, you know? Yeah. And then he's just all, back at camp, like making beds and yeah, like <laughs> just yeah. vibing. <laughs> yeah. All he does is win, 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 no matter what. That song. There you go. That's a reference. There you go. All right. Raging Lemon Monster asks, was the was the Banu casting the new era of Survivor finally jumping the shark with their casting? Is this is mm. Banu the straw that's going to break the camel's back? Is this have we gone too far? Yeah, I think that's definitely possible. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. I I feel like Banu is like definitely the the flashiest in terms of like casting this season. But I mean, like you were saying earlier, Wesley, like I I just don't there's a lot of the cast this season that I'm, I'm not like the biggest fan of like not that they're unlikable but it's just they're just kind of boring like as a whole you know what I mean so. sometimes I think the show doesn't know what the audience is going to think and that's fine by the way the mm -hmm. show is not perfect yeah totally but they're just people making the show too you know they're not yeah. perfect so for example in 41 when they gave Shan a very sympathetic exit they gave her sad music I'm like I was laughing so hard I was hysterically yeah. laughing because of how funny it was to me the fact that the show thought we were rooting for shan nobody was rooting for mm -hmm. shan that was a villain but the show was thinking this was some fan favorite which she was at the beginning mm -hmm. and then she turned villain by the time she was gone so i was laughing so hard and i'm not saying i'm laughing so hard here but i do think the show is missing the mark on understanding what people are what, what i assume most people are thinking about bono i saw a lot of negative comments i did not go into the depths of facebook and instagram and uh twitter yet to see what people wise. think about bonu <laughs> but i assume if i jumped over those platforms that there'd be a lot of why is survivor so woke why are people casting or crying because mm -hmm. i see a lot of this stuff when i look anyways why are people yeah. crying so hard on show calls like i want they basically people want to see more people be like men and not 40 year old mm -hmm. crying babies that's why i get a lot of 
I don't know how to say yeah. that. I guess yeah. kind of second No, fair it. enough. Yeah. You know, and I, I, same thing. I watched the show Tough as Nails. Uh, I watched the first two seasons and there was so much crying on the show. I was like, the name is misleading. Mm, yeah. The show's called Tough as Nails and it's literally people doing hard, heavy work. And I have never seen so much crying in my entire life. So I stopped yeah. watching that show. Anyways, uh, next question. Scribble Studio asks, is Soda really going to be targeted? Or is it just the show trying to make us not focus on Venus? Hmm. Yeah. I mean, that's a good question. Again, it's like really hard to tell because Nami hasn't been to tribal yet. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, it, it's really hard to tell where the lines are actually being drawn in the sand. I think once they do have to go to tribal, like there's probably going to be multiple people that will be discussed. And like, I think even Liz, like her name will probably come up. And um, so in terms of who's going to get the most heat, Honestly, I could see Soda being targeted more than Venus right now just because I think being seen as a social threat is kind of a bigger deal than just like someone who's like kind of annoying or like that you don't get along with, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I'll, I'll definitely be curious to see when they actually go to tribal. Next question is from Justin, and this is a good one, I want to say. Uh, mm -hmm. I meant to mention it during the episode and we got so sidetracked. So Justin mm -hmm. brought up, I saw jumping off the platform, the shots of Hunter and Venus were in slow motion. Now, is oh, this important? Yes. And I don't think it's important because they do slow motion shots. Per, this is my personal opinion. They've done this mm -hmm. in their seasons and that wasn't like, oh no, that was the winner who got the slow. No, they showed like a slow motion shot of, I forgot, Ricard or whatever his name was in 41 and he completely mm -hmm. misses the shot and it's to make you feel bad about the tribe missing the shot and again i was laughing because nobody liked that mm -hmm. tribe the uwa <laughs> tribe or whatever like i don't care this tribe's falling apart uh anyways so i wonder what the shot the slow-mo shot of hunter was from the theme song though mm -hmm. the one that we keep talking about we're talking about oh and that's another thing i we we forgot again this week i mean mary and i always mm -hmm. talk about it but we talk about our winter now it's like well tevin tiffany hunter and venus all got slow motion shots before any of the names show up in the theme song and i feel like they did that in 45 and they showed mm -hmm. the final three. Yeah. So anyways, that's part of the winter analysis. But anyways, they showed well, Venus got one that was not in the. I don't think that was her shot unless they did some. Well, unless it was like reverse. I don't remember exactly what her shot looks like in the theme song. Was this the shot? Yeah. Uh, Honestly, I'd have to watch the theme song again. I don't recall. I will watch the theme song again. All right. I, yeah. I don't know if I'll do it right now, but I'll do it before I <laughs> podcast with Mary. Yeah. Okay. Let me double check. I think that was our sixth question. So what's our several question? Oh, yes. Oh man. I lost track. Where the heck was it? I already asked that one. I asked that one. Oh, here we go. Last question from Randall Westgard. Long time follower of the channel. All right. When I start mm -hmm. recognizing names like this, Randall's been here since day one. That's not true, but probably. Nice. All right. <laughs> <laughs> She says, I thought Jeff wasn't snuffing the torches of quitters anymore. Mm. I don't think Bonnie quit. I think it was just, he, like, yeah. we all knew it was going to happen. Yeah. It is a gray area, though. And I'm, I mean, again, another argument for, like, why Jeff should make them still actually vote. Because, like, I think the spirit of it was, like, I don't, I don't think the spirit of it was, like, Bonnie quitting. But, yeah, technically, no one voted. So, I don't know. I will say that with, with uh, Jeff. You, he just says a lot of things. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> that's, a, that's always important. Now I see people on, on on Reddit like trying to analyze what Jeff said preseason. It's like Jeff just says things to get you to watch the show. Like fifty, right. it's fifty fifty on whether it's actually true or not. It's how, it's a flip of a coin. That's why I say mm -hmm. I don't listen to those on fire podcasts till the season's done. Um, because that way I can filter through what the white noise. What what is yeah? What is just nonsense? So people with better ears than me probably can filter through the nonsense mid season. I can't. I'll get too caught up in things he says if I do that. So I, I try mm -hmm. to wait till the end. Yeah. I try to. I see clips on Instagram that they post and stuff. So anyways, well, that's I think that's it for this podcast. I'm sure we went longer than the actual yeah. episode. You're welcome, everybody. Yeah. It's pretty impressive. Yeah. And <laughs> thank you again to Liz for sponsoring the podcast. Remember yes. everyone, if you do not like Liz. I legally I have to say that we love her and she definitely will yes. not home alone to you with gold bars. <laughs> legally I have to say that. Now nah, before yes. Liz with Good. her fat sacks of cash is probably my favorite joke since Sammy is only 19 years old. 
Yeah. It's yeah. it's a really good bit. I feel like it's 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 very quotable. simple, but it's also versatile. It's very quotable. And you use it, yeah, you use many situations. Player singing out challenges is very specific to a season. Uh mm-hmm. did you know that Katura hates Bruce? Mm-hmm. Very specific to a season and yep. about another person, of course. Uh, yeah. Also got overplayed by more than just me. I think Liz yeah. and her facts, sacks of cash. I think that's this. This is probably the only podcast is going to make that joke. I hope. Yeah. I hope it's just us. Yeah. So, maybe we'll start a trend. Yeah. Maybe I uh, start seeing it pop up in places. <laughs> no, nah, I think Liz is just not as important of a character as uh, Katura was. So I just don't think it'll come up as much. Yeah. Yeah. That's fair. Yeah. Yeah. It would be funny though if it came up during the reunion. Jeff's like, yes. Actually, we already have a millionaire here before the show started. <laughs> Jumped over to Liz. She's like, oh, actually, yeah, Liz, we're taking a million dollars from you. <laughs> Liz says she's gonna. She actually has the prize fund in her bank account. She's gonna pay the winner. She's like, oh yeah, I, I won't even notice that yeah. it's gone. Like, oh, here, here's a million Jeff, dollars. You didn't already you take know? that out. Oh, I didn't even notice. <laughs> uh. Oh, Liz. All right. Well, thank you everyone for listening. We'll see you tomorrow for our full-blown winter analysis with Mary. Okay, bye. Bye.